All right, we continue reading from The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. When we last left off, uh, Edward and Bryce had gone to Memphis, and Bryce was making him dance, trying to earn some money, but he didn't quite have enough for uh, his meal. Edward's head hit something, and then he had this very strange dream where everybody he'd ever known and loved was there. And so we're assuming it was kind of a dream... We don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, chapter 23. Exceedingly well made, said the man who was running a warm cloth over Edward's face. A work of art, I would say. A surpassingly, unbelievably dirty work of art. But art nonetheless. And dirt can be dealt with, just as your broken head has been dealt with. Edward looked into the eyes of the man. Ah, there you are, the man said. I can see that you're listening now. Your head was broken. I fixed it. I brought you back from the world of the dead. My heart, thought Edward. My heart is broken. No, no, no need to thank me, the man said. It's my job, quite literally. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lucius Clark, Dalmender. Your head, may I tell you, will it upset you? Well, I always say the truth must be met head on, no pun intended. Your head, young sir, was in twenty-one pieces. So his head did crack when he hit the counter. Twenty-one pieces? Edward, Edward repeated mindlessly. Lucius Clark nodded. Twenty-one, he said. All modesty aside, uh, I must admit that a lesser Dalmender, a Dalmender without my skills, might not have been able to rescue you. But let's not speak of what might have been. Let us speak instead of what is. You are whole. You have been pulled back from the brink of oblivion, oblivion by your humble servant, Lucius Clark. And here, Lucius Clark put his hand on his chest and bowed deeply over Edward. This was quite a speech to wake up to and Edward lay on his back trying to absorb it. He was on a wooden table. He was in a room with sunshine pouring in from the high windows. His head, apparently, had been in twenty-one pieces, and now was put back together into one. He was not wearing a red suit. In fact, he had no clothes on at all. He was naked, again, and he did not have wings. And then he remembered. Bryce the diner. Neil swinging him through the air. Bryce. You're wondering perhaps about your young friend, said Lucius, the one with the continually running nose. Yes, he brought you here, weeping, begging for my assistance. Put him together again, he said. Put him back together. I told him, I said, young sir, I'm a businessman. I can put your rabbit back together again for a price question is, can you pay the price? He could not, of course. He could not. He said that he could not. I told him then that he had two options, only two. The first option being that he seek assistance elsewhere. Option two was that I would fix you to the very best of my considerable abilities, and then you would become mine. His no longer, but mine. Here Lucius fell silent. He nodded agreeing with himself. Two options only, he said, and your friend chose option two. He gave you up so that you could be healed. Extraordinary, really. Bryce, thought Edward. Lucius Clark clapped his hands together. But no worries, my friend, no worries. I fully intend to keep up my end of the bargain. I will restore you to what I perceive to be your former glory. You shall have a rabbit fur ears and a rabbit fur tail. Your whiskers will be repaired and replaced. Your eyes repainted to a bright and stunning blue. You'll be clothed in the finest of suits. And then some day I will reap the return on my investment in you. All in good time. All in good time. In the doll business we have a saying, there is real time and there is doll time. You, my friend have entered doll time.
speaking of time, it's been a long time, hasn't it, since Abilene lost Edward on the boat, all except his watch that she was able to cling on to. And then he was found by Nellie, and it's kind of went on. And we don't know how long he was with each person or how long he was at the bottom of the ocean, but we know it's been a long time. All right. Uh, chapter 24. And so Edward II Lane was mended, put together again, cleaned and polished, dressed in an elegant suit, and placed on a high shelf for display. From this shelf, Edward could see the whole shop, Lucius Clark's workbench and the windows to the outside world and the door that the customers used to enter and leave. From this shelf, Edward saw Bryce open the door one day and stand in the threshold the silver harmonica in his left hand, flashing brilliantly in the sunlight flooding in through the windows. Young sir, said Lucius, I'm afraid that we made a deal. Can I see him? asked Bryce. He wiped his hand across his nose, and the gesture filled Edward with a terrible feeling of love and loss. I just want to look at him. Lucius Clark sighed. Hmm, you may look. He said, you may look and then you must go and not come back. I cannot have you in my shop every day mooning over what you have lost. Yes, sir, said Bryce. Lucius sighed again. He got up from his workbench and went to Edward's shelf and picked him up and held him so that Bryce could see him. Hey, Jangles, said Bryce. You look good. Last time I seen you, you look terrible. Your head was busted in, and he is put together again, said Lucius, as I promised you he would be. Bryce nodded. He wiped his hand across his nose. There's actually a color picture of Bryce coming to see him. Can I hold him? he asked. No, said Lucius. Bryce nodded again. Tell him goodbye, said Lucius Clark. He's repaired and he's been saved. Now you must tell him goodbye. Goodbye, said Bryce. Don't go, thought Edward. I won't be able to bear it if you go. And now you must leave, said Lucius Clark. Yes, sir, said Bryce. But he stood without moving, looking at Edward. Go, said Lucius Clark, go. Please, thought Edward, don't. Bryce turned. He walked through the door of the doll mender's shop. The door closed. The bell tinkled. And Edward was alone. Poor Edward, he keeps losing people. But I think by losing people, he's learning an awful lot about love, isn't he? All right. We'll see if he ever turns from being a warthog back into the princess, like in Pellegrina's story.